Thank you. All right, thank you. So um, you guys, by now you should have seen an interaction diagram very similar to this, right? And we have a very good example on it. So this is going to be like normalized interaction diagram. Axial load is giving the y direction, and the moment is giving the x direction. We have a very good solved example in this. Um, have you guys seen this before? Or anyone didn't see it? We've seen it. You have seen it. You know how to use it from the example. Yeah. Can someone help me and tell me which slide set is this on? It's the third column one, I think. Okay, third on the column. Okay, all right. And then uh, you understand that this, this, what is this number here? Can someone help me with that? What is 1%? What is this 0.01? Yeah, can someone help with that? What is this curve for? For some reason, part of the chat, I'm, I, I'm unable to see it, but hold on. Yeah, this is a minimum steel. Um, yeah, but this like for the C ratio, right? One, one percent, two percent, three percent. It's really about the C ratio. Yeah, one to eight percent. Absolutely, this is correct. So, if you guys don't mind, if you please, can can you just use a microphone and speak instead of texting? Because I want this to be recorded. Um, I want everybody to hear this later on. So this is from 1% to 8%. This is going to be for the C ratio. What happened is going to be 1.5%. I guess you're going to be doing a curve right this, right? You're going to do a curve right in the middle, right? And you can just use it. So I'm going to say this value here is going to be for the C ratio. OK, so I know I need to pick the graph I need. So is this for PN or VPN? Is the fee factor included here, or I need to multiply by the fee factor? It's not included. Oh, the fee factor is not in here yet. So be sure that the fee factor is still going to come. And also, this piece of the diagram, which is chopped off. You remember this small eccentricity thing that usually come here and then take a section of it, right? We just cut a section here. And then we do interaction diagram like this, so it's not included here. So this is a pure interaction diagram without the fee factor, without this small eccentricity thing. Now, what is this? I mean, I'm trying to find out what is this case of n. It says Pn, and then you have a prime C A G, meaning um, this can be like a ratio, right? If you have this like as your demand because pn you can say pn is going to be equal to phi pn divided by the phi factor right you just take out the phi factor which is the same as p sub u divided by the phi factor so i was going to say I'm, I'm not getting it so i'm going to say you know phi right pn we usually set it to be the same as p ultimate so we said demand equal to capacity Therefore, if I set them equal to each other, this Pn is going to be equal to P sub u divided by the phi factor when you bring the phi factor here, which is this right here. So this can be P sub u divided by the phi factor. And then you divide by this information, which you have it available. And with that, you get to call this normalized axial load. So it's not really the axial load because axial load is just Pn or P sub u or Ppn. But this is here, Pn divided by Ag f prime c. So it is normalized. And you see, you have here a value of one. Same thing here for this axis. This is going to be normalized moment. And the moment is going to be Pn multiplied by E. So what I'm saying here, you should expect the interaction diagram. is going to be for a spiral column like this, or it's going to be for tight column. It's going to be one of the two. Of course, the strength is going to be given to you, the steel, yield strength, and the gamma. The, this gamma here. Is going to be the ratio between the distance distance of the center line of the rebars to the diameter of the column itself. Okay. How about these numbers here? 
Do you guys understand what are these numbers for? What is this line for? What is happening along this line? You guys know? For example, what is happening? Failure. What's happening at this point? It happened right at this point. Can you repeat, please? Is it the failure of the steel and concrete to be equal? Well, along this line here, when you multiply here, when you use, let's say, um, the P factor and everything, this gonna be like the maximum point, right? The ultimate, the capacity point. But what is happening along this line? I'm gonna say along this line, I need to look at this. What does it say? The steel strain is gonna be stress is gonna be equal to what? Zero. The tension, steel stress is gonna be equal to zero. The tension, strain is gonna be equal to the strain here and the tension steel is gonna be equal to zero along this line. Correct? So, yeah, it makes sense because it says Fs divided by Fy is gonna be equal to zero. Therefore, Fs, the strain in the tension steel here is gonna be equal to zero. You can see how about this line here? What's happening along this line? What is the ratio of Fs to Fy along this line? Can someone help me with this? They're equal. They're equal, which means along this line, the steel strain, the tension, of course, is going to be equal to the yield strain, which means this is going to be the balanced point. So any of these points, all of this interaction, uh, between this straight line and between all of this curves. So let's say, for example, your ST ratio is equal to 3%. So I'm going to count the curves. It's going to be 1, 2, 3. Here's a 3%. Once it hits here, this is going to be the balance point for this column. It's going to be right here. It's going to be this one. So I ask here to find out the balance point from this diagram, not by analysis. So all what you need to do is just look at this point, right? and then do a straight line like this, do a straight line like this, right? And this is gonna be your balance point, the coordinates of your balance point. Normalized moment is gonna be equal to 0.16. Normalized axial load, if this is gonna be 0.3, let's say 0.33 or so, or 0.34. This is how do you know it, but this is before you multiply by the fee factor. So you need to figure out what's gonna be the fee factor at the balance point. Can someone help with this? When the strain in the steel is equal to 0 0.0021, what was the fee factor? Yeah? Can someone help with this? Can you please speak because I cannot see the chat. I see your chat, something is blinking, but uh, I need your help to speak, please. Yeah, can someone help? So P factor 0.75 for spiral. Okay, let me share this with you. What happened? When the tension of steel is going to be at the yield point. Where is the yield point? Yield point means the strain in the steel is going to be 0 0.0021, which means this is going to be the point. So I'm going to say this is actually going to be the balance of point, which is this line here. The question is, if I have a tight column, how much is the fee factor in this case? Say fee factor is 0.65. So for the balance of point, the fee factor is 0.65 for type columns or rectangular sections. For the spiral, it's gonna be 0 0.75. So it's not gonna be that point, it's gonna be that point, right? This is when the steel is gonna start to yield, right at this point. And of course, when the strain in the steel is gonna be going up, once it hits 0 0.005, fee factor would become 0 0.9. Now I understand. If I'm gonna go here back, my diagram here, I'm going to say, okay, it means in this section here, the strain is going to be higher than the yield strain. And most likely right here, the fee factor is going to be 
Start from the balance point going all the way up, all of this section. The fee factory is gonna be equal to 0.65 when you have tight column in all of this section here. All of these values, the fee factory is gonna be 0.65. For the spider comes gonna be 0.75. So you need to understand this. So I'm gonna be asking you similar questions to what you guys have seen in your midterm and some of the homework. I'm gonna give you this diagram here and ask you questions that you should be able to solve by looking at the diagram and find out some values. We have a very good solved example on this. I want you to please to go through it, solve it a few times. Um, I'm not gonna ask you to any of the equations. So you don't really need to use like the code equations, but you're gonna be using these equations, which is not really equations. This is just to find out the normalized moment and normalized absolute. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions. If the moment is gonna be that much and the absolute is gonna be that much, is the columns gonna be okay or not? And of course, I'm gonna ask you to show it on the diagram. For example, axial compression, where's the maximum axial compression? Can you find it for this given column? So you're gonna have the C ratio, you're gonna have concrete strength, yield the trends, and the gamma factor, because I'm gonna give you this specific diagram for it, right? Then I'm gonna say, what is the maximum axial compression? So you need to come up with this value. You, you remember this value that you're gonna be chopping up? Something like this, let's say for this diagram, you need to find out this value from the diagram itself. Now it's gonna be your chance to work on this, right at home, before you get to the exam. I'm gonna say here, um, what is the maximum moment capacity? Let's say if the axial load is equal to zero, you're gonna say axial load is equal to zero. This is gonna be the moment capacity. It's gonna be, let's say for 3%, it's gonna be this point. And then you figure out PN times E, which is the moment in this case. And of course you need to multiply by the fee factor in this case which is gonna be 0.9. Or I'm gonna be asking you, not just all, and I'm gonna be asking you, is the axial load is gonna be equal to that much? How much is the flexure capacity? Any questions on this problem? Could you repeat what you had said earlier about the, the fee factor um, from the balancing point up? Fee factor in here, in this section, Hold on. Do you guys all hear me or not really? Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me. So would you please, um, if you have any questions, please um, just to speak, please use a microphone. Um, I have some issues here that I'm unable to read all the chat on time. So if you have a question, I see a question that I have to go in uh, like minimize everything to be able to see the chat. And then I see here about the percentage. So please, if you have any questions, just please speak. And it's gonna be okay, okay? Um, so what I'm saying is, starting from the balance point going up, which means all of this section that I put a box around it, the P factor is gonna be equal to, in here, is gonna be 0 0.65 for tight columns, 0.75 for spider columns. Why? Because at this point, right at this point, you see here when it says one, it means that the steel is gonna be at the yield point, which is still the tension steel. So in this case, Fs divided by Fy is gonna be equal to 1.0. The strain here becomes 0 0.0021. And in this case, if you look at the diagram for the, for the strength production factor, the fee factor, you're gonna see that this gonna be the start of the transition zone. Now, where's the transition zone? I'm gonna say transition zone is gonna be somewhere here. It's gonna be from here. If I may do this box here, right? It's gonna be something like this. So in here is gonna be transition. And then at the bottom, at certain point one, the strain here is gonna be reaching 0.05 and more, you're gonna have fee factor 0.9. So let me put this here. I'm gonna say fee factor is gonna be equal to 0.9. And here, fee factor in this section is equal to 0.65 tight and it's gonna be equal to 0.75 spiral. So, okay. How about here in the transition zone? You can say ranges from 0.65 to 0.9 for tide. And of course, it's gonna be from point 
75.9 for spiral columns. Did we cover this three factor thing? Yes or no? Questions? No, thank you. All right, very good. I have a question. Yes. Um, if we're given, like, if we're asked to find something in the transition zone, how would we find the fee factor for that, like, from the graph? This is a very good question. Not, not from this graph, right? From the other yeah. graph, all right? Very good question. Thank you. All right. Let's go to the graph and see how can we use a graph. You know, if this train is going to be 0 0.02 or smaller, your fee factor is going to be 0 0.65. Let's say that we are just talking about five columns from there, right? This is going to be the area of 0 0.65. And once you get to here, right, it's going to be 0 0.9. How about in the middle? So the question is, do you know the strain in the steel? I say, yes, I know the strain. This is how I was able to see which region I'm going to be at. In the transition zone, where is the fee factor? Do we have an equation for the fee factor? I'm going to say it is right here. Look at this. It says here's going to be equal to 0.65 plus the strain in the steel in tension, subtracting 0.02, which is the strain, multiplied by 250 divided by 3. So we have this interpolation equation in the transition zone. To answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on this section for the spiral column or tight column? So, okay. Second problem. You should expect problem punching sheet check. If this interior column is going to say so. And let me tell you this, if you have a footing and this column is gonna be in the middle of the footing, you treat it as interior column. So I said this before, I know it's recorded, but during the exam, I still see people ask me and say, is this interior column? And I say, okay, I discussed it before, but this is fine. Maybe you haven't watched the video or maybe you're not um, attending the class, it's fine. Yes, it's gonna be interior column. But in your final, I'm not going to be answered questions like this. I mean, I cannot help by giving you information because you should know it. So when you have a footing on a column and this like a pad or a footing and the column is going to be in the middle, it's going to be an interior column. We have just done this punch and cheer check a few times now. And um, you should be very good now with punching check. Any questions on punching check? Two way share, not one way share. Can someone help me and tell me where to find good example of punching shear check? Which slide set? Uh, that should be lecture 12. Slide set number 12, okay. Yeah, the uh, reinforced concrete foundation. Yeah, how many slides in this slide set? Uh, I'm gonna say like towards the bottom. So that would be, yeah, let me see. Uh, it starts at slide 55. Very good. I'm at slide here 55. Just introduction first for slabs and then after that for foundation. And if you're looking for a very good example, right? You can go to page or slide number 61. Please write a note about this. Start from slide 61. This is where you have the calculations. So it's gonna be actually 61, 62, and 63. Should be very simple. Any questions on punching check? No questions? All right. Third problem, I'm gonna give you a problem like this. It's gonna be a very standard beam that you guys have seen, right? So I'm gonna just change some stuff here. It has top reinforcing, bottom reinforcing, clear distance. You have here, let's say, this is gonna be clear cover or distance from center line to edge of concrete, two inches, two and a half. Here is the width, top reinforcing, bottom reinforcing, location. And I'm gonna be asking you a few questions. How much is FEMA? How much is VVN? I may consider this to be a T-section. I may consider the top reinforcing, 
or ignore the top reinforcing. So you're gonna have here Fman and Fvn. Any questions on that? This is something that from the beginning that you guys you should have started it. And this is from early lectures that we went through all of that. And you have seen it in midterm one. You have seen it also in midterm two. How to find out female for some given reinforcing. Any questions on this simple um, section or design? No. All right, great. Now for the same beam here, I'm gonna be taking this beam and reuse it again in question number four. I'm gonna be asked here for development length. It could be for the bottom bars or the top bars, one of these two bars. And uh, again, uh, when you do the C sub B, if you remember CB, I'm gonna give it to you right here. It's gonna be like two inches versus two and a half inches. And then you pick the smaller or the larger of the two. I forgot, can someone remind me? Smaller, two. yeah, smaller. Two. you are correct. The smaller of the two, this is correct. All right, great. So, I'm gonna say, How much is the development length? It's straight, right? Development length, and do you have this in your equations, or we don't have it? Do you have the formula sheet handy? Yeah, we do. It's in the, the second page. Great. Do you have also the hook length? Hook development length. Do you guys see it? Yes. Great. Okay. And do you know the splice length? How do you do the splice versus the hook? Does it say anything in the formula sheet? Well, it's we're supposed to extract it from the 340 FY square root of the concrete, right? No, what I'm saying is after you do development length, you have the splice length is gonna be equal to 1.3 times development length. Do you see this in the formula sheet? Yes or no? No, it's not there. Yes, it says lap length, 1.3 DL. Okay, let me share this with you. I was able to open it now. Here's the formula sheet. I'm gonna go here to the second page. So this gave me development length, it'll sub D the straight, and this gave me the hook. You see, it, it says here LDH, development length for the hook. So the equation is simpler, and here's gonna be all the conditions for it, right? So, okay, how about here? You can see here's gonna be just a straight development length. After I do straight development length, just multiply by 1.3 times LD. This gave you the splice length. We could lap length or splice, lap splice length. This gave you the same. I'm gonna say, okay, how about shear walls? Did you do problem the shear walls? Do we have a good solved example? Can someone help me and say, which slide set this is gonna be at? The shear wall. 17. 17, excellent, very good. And do you guys remember an equation? I mean, what page is that that, that we have some, some solution and some equations and do we have a, a good example? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say example two. What slide starts at? 16. Exactly, 16, 17, and 18. So we're gonna have here three, sli three slides that you should see here a problem taken from this example. This is gonna be very similar to what you're looking here at. So let me also share this with you. If you give me just a second, please. It's gonna be right here. This here, number 16, right? Here's number 17, number 19. So here you have one problem that you need to solve something very similar to this. Of course, different dimensions, different information, and you need to be able to figure out this PVN for the is needed. So at the end, you're gonna have your PVN. I want you to know how to do this PVN for shear wall. 
if you can do it, this is great. This is one problem guaranteed. All right, any questions for me? With that, I'm done. So if you have any questions, go ahead and start to ask. Um, for the development link, will we be given a question where KTR is not equal to zero? Uh, I guess we said that usually KTR is gonna be equal to zero at all times, am I correct? Yeah, there was an example where we did solve for KTR. So I just wanted to um, make sure. No, mostly okay. KTR is gonna be taken equal to zero. Okay. Assume to be equal to zero, no problem. All right, any other questions? Um, well, part two, the punching shear track be directly related to part one of the interaction diagram. Like will it use like VU or something? No, or will it's, it be it's a standalone, standalone problem. So you are okay. not confused, yeah. Yeah. Is there any waiting for uh, material after midterm two or is it a pretty evenly cumulative? like as far as timing and point values? Is gonna be a kind of, um, when you say here cumulative, you're talking here about the final and I just told you exactly what the final is gonna cover, but when it comes to distribution of points, it is gonna be almost the same. It's gonna be based on the effort needed for each problem. Perfect, yeah, I was wondering if there was a weighting. It, yeah, obviously it'll be cumulative, right? But. Uh... Yeah, yeah, if it was weighted more towards new material or something like that. No, it, it is going to be based on the effort. Roger. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. So, for example, longer problems is going to have more points. Whereas it's going to be like from the previous materials or new material, doesn't matter. Okay. For number one, the interaction diagram um, yeah. is E. Like, can, is that something we can get from the graph? Which one? Uh, e, the eccentricity. Um, you can get it from the graph. Uh, well, not just from the graph, right? Uh, right, because I think in the example we solved for it. But I, uh... Yeah, you solve for it, which means that you get it from the graph. When you look at it, I, I don't want to say, no, it is not from the graph or there's a way to get from the graph. If you are able to do exact same problem that you see here in the slide set on this spiral column, you should be good if you really understand it. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Do you guys know what is the time of your exam? When do you think it's gonna start? Do you have this information? Five o'clock Monday. Okay, great. Five o'clock Monday. Tuesday. I think Tuesday actually. Is it Monday or Tuesday? I have Tuesday. Tuesday. I have something here in the chat. Has someone typed anything there? Will you please? May 18. Yeah, okay. 5 to 6.50 on the 18th. Okay, and 18 is which, which day is 18th? Tuesday. All right. Any questions? Same deal on Proctorio, couple of minutes to scan at the end. All, all that's staying the same? Not a couple of minutes. I'm going to give you 10 minutes. If you like to scan the whole thing and just upload it through one of the problems, this gave you okay. I'd rather just ask you to do it through one, um, just, um, just one big file is easier. But be sure that you don't combine two problems in the same page, please. And be sure that the problem number is gonna be shown in each in each page. Yeah. 
Yes, a uh, question from Ramzi. Yes, go ahead. Um, could you go over the uh, development and spices, spices, please? Like the example or just how to use the calc um, equation in general? Okay, no problem. Okay, here's a slide set at which we have this, uh, this gave you slide set number 13. And we have this spice equation that's also given to you in the formula sheet. Yeah, we're gonna have a few factors here, epsilon sub t, e, and s. T is gave you for the location of the bars, top or bottom, or for a column is gave you for the vertical rebars. And then you treat it as to be bottom rebars. This gave you for the epoxy coating, this gave you for the bar size. KTR you just gave you taken as zero. C sub B is the edge distance from the center of the rebar to the edge. And then D sub B is gave you the bar diameter and the rest of the information, you guys, you have it. Lambda factors gave you this uh, lightweight or normal weight coefficient. For normal weight is gave you equal to 1.0. For lightweight is gave you 0.75 or 0.85. And here is the equation that you guys need to use. You have this equation to the formula sheet and you have all the values, different values that you can use. You know, all the different values in terms of the size of T and the values of this all of size and things like this. Like all of this, you have all of this information. So what's gonna happen, I'm gonna give you here this column, uh, this beam section. You're gonna be so for the beam section, you need to find Vmn and Vvn. After that, in the um, next problem, gonna we ask you to do here development length and splice length. So this is gonna be something very similar to this. So you have the bar size, and then you have the distance from the center line to the edge of the concrete. You have both of these two, very similar to what you have here. This is going to be given to you directly. The CB1, you can do this if you are doing here the central bar. And then, of course, you're going to be picking the smaller of the two, right? And then let me start here. Here's a solution. Uh, based on the yield strength and concrete strength, you can do K sub D. Now, how do you do here K sub D from the table? You can use the table or just use the equation. Let me go back here, show you the equation. Here is the equation. It is gonna be three divided by 40, Fy divided by square root of F prime C. In this equation, everything need here to be in P sign. So F sub Y is gonna be 60,000, and F prime C, let's say if this is gonna be 4,000, you use here 4,000 in this equation. Please use P psi when you have equations like this. And with that, you're gonna have the case of D. Or, but in this case, you don't really have it in your final exam, you don't have this table, so don't count on using this table. Just use this equation. So, okay. Now you have the steps that you need to follow. Look at the rebar size. Look at the rebar location. Am I asking you to do the top rebar or bottom rebars? Uh, is it epoxy coated or no epoxy coating? Uh, how about the size of the rebar, right? And you're going to be doing this exactly. It's going to be the same steps that you're looking here at. Uh, if it's going to be top bars, it's going to be 1.3. Bottom bars is going to be what? 1.0. Uncoated bars is gonna be one, and then you have higher factors for the epoxy coated, right? And then based on the size, you're gonna have this of size of S for the size. And then you do the check, this multiplier. It has to be less than 1.7. If it happened to be, let's say 1.9, just use 1.7 in your answers. And then after that, you do the C sub B, which means the edge distance, right? You take the smaller of the two, and then KTR you usually use it zero, and then you do this equation, CB plus KTR divided by DB. After you do this, now go to the big equation. Here it is. Just plug in all of these numbers and you get the development length. If this development length turns to be less than 12 inches, please use 12 inches. Then after you are done, let's say 61.7, call it 62. If you have a number like 82.3, just make it 84. I mean, a couple of inches is not gonna be a big deal, right? When it comes to the cost of the reinforcing. 
if I'm asking you for the splice, just take this number, multiply by 1.3 to get the splice mass. Good thing you have a very good solved example in the slide set, and you should miss it. Thank you, that's been helpful. No problem. Right, more questions. Did you say on the final the CB links would be like given so we don't have to really calculate them? We just take the smaller one? The C beam, did, did you see? Um, okay. Give me a second. Let me share this. I said here the bottom rebos. Can you tell me what CB value I should be using here? Two. Good. That's it. Do you need to do any comparison, any other analysis? No. How about half the distance from here to there? Half the distance between these two rebars. Shouldn't you find out half of it? Or no? Yeah. Okay. All right. So be sure that you do this distance here and also compare it. Why? Because let's say in this case here, I'm going to say 18 inch. And then this gave me two inches, right? And two inches from the other side. So it's gave me 18 minus four. We're talking about here 14 inch. 14 inch divided by two spaces because you have one space, another space. It's gave me seven inches. So from this point here to this point here is how much? Talking about this distance here. 3.5. 3.5. Now compare 3.5 to 2.5 to two. Which one is the smallest? You can say two inches. So use two inches. Jorge, did I answer your question here? Yeah, thank you. Okay, no problem. Excuse me, Professor, and F size equal one for bottom rebar? Psi equals one for what? Say it again. And bottom rebars. Yeah, yeah. It is one for bottom rebars. This is correct. Thank you. Yeah, because you have more than one Psi, right? Remember this. Yes. You have a Psi T, E, and okay. So how about the vertical rebars? What value do you use for the size of T? One. Okay, very good. This is correct, yes. All right. If you guys run out of questions, I let you go and please study very well for this exam. Okay, thank you for the review. All right, thank you and good luck. Please go ahead and sign up. Professor, are we going? Oh, go ahead. Um, could you scroll down to the bottom of the um, page you're sharing? In here, which which one? Which one? Yeah, the you? one the one you're showing. I just want to see like if I got all the what? number five. Number five is not listed here. Number five is gonna be the shear wall. Okay, thank you. No problem. Is this page gonna be posted? Well, you can watch the video. Do you really want this? Does it sound, does it look like very critical to you that you want me to post it? No, just a question. The video should be enough. Okay. Thank you. Good. But if you want to, I'll post it. Uh, I'm okay. I can't speak for everybody else. Okay. Very good. All right. To study for the final, um, would you suggest going over the lectures and then doing the lecture problems, lecture examples again, and then um, and then doing the homework, or would you say prioritize homework um, and then go over the examples from lecture? Okay, I would say first number one, look at this specific lecture again. Watch it again. See exactly what topics or subject I, I stressed on. Yeah. 
Okay, this can be number one. Number two, go to these specific lectures and read them again from the slide set. And then redo the examples that you have in there. And watch these specific lectures, the recorded ones. And then after that, you do the homework related to it. And the project problems related to that specific section that I covered. If you can do this, you should be in excellent shape. Um, professor, I have two questions. Yes. So uh, will you be providing the percentage for the interaction diagram? I'm gonna give you the steel. Or will, will we be calculating just the 1% and the 8% just like the project? How would you calculate it? I'm gonna give you the column section. I'm gonna give you the reinforcing inside this column. So the steel ratio is gonna be equal to AS divided by AG. Is give you the cross section area of the steel rebars divided by the cross section area of the concrete section. Mm -hmm. So you need to figure it out. If I give you here a column, let's say the column is 24 by 24, it has eight number eight. Can you figure out the vertical C ratio yourself? Oh, uh, yeah, I just meant like how we have it on the interaction diagram. Yeah. That but you'll determine this ratio yourself. You're going to do the analysis and do it yourself. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering. Uh, sure. but thank you. And um, on Tuesday, um, are we like are we supposed to log into Zoom as well, or we don't have to? You don't have to unless you have a question. And if I'm available, this is fine. Okay. I'll try to make myself available during your exam just in case. But you mm -hmm. don't have to. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Thank no you so problem. much for everything. Have a great day. No problem. You and too. All right. Thank you.